This is video number four for section 6.7 and 7.1, Understanding Vertex Form. We're ready now to dive into quadratic functions. And uh, there's something about this that's complicated right off the bat. And that is that with quadratic functions, there are actually two different ways you can write the equation. Uh, remember, with linear functions, we pretty much had y equals mx plus b. And with exponential functions, we had y equals a times b to the x. And that's all we had to learn. With quadratic functions, you've got two different versions. You can have a quadratic version written in what's called standard form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, or it can be written in vertex form, y equals a parentheses x minus h squared plus k. They're both important. We're going to see them both and use them both. They are also both interchangeable, meaning any quadratic function can always be written both ways. It's just that sometimes one way is more helpful and sometimes the other way is more helpful. You'll notice that each form has a bunch of constants. Uh, a is the same constant in both forms. So that number appears identical in both. But standard form has b and c, whereas vertex form has h and k. And one of the things we're going to need to figure out is what do all these letters do? What do they mean? How do they impact the function and the graph and, and so forth? In this video, we're going to concentrate on vertex form, and we'll tackle standard form in a later lesson. OK, so the first thing we want to do is we want to figure out what does this A do, this number here that's at the front. What does it do? What does it impact uh, as far as the function goes? And just so we can concentrate on it, what we'll do is let's get h and k out of the way by setting them equal to 0 just for the moment. We'll worry about h and k later. If I make h and k 0, well, that means this whole part here is going to go away. In other words, I'll be left with simply an x squared. And if k is 0, this whole part goes away too. So I'm left with just y equals ax squared. What I did is I picked a few different values of a so that we could experiment a little bit and see what happens when you change the a. Uh, we'll go to the graphing calculator and graph some of these things. For example, when a is 1, if I plug a 1 right here, I'm just going to have y equals 1x squared. In other words, y equals x squared. If a is 2, I would have 2x squared, and I can fill in the rest as well y equals 0.5x squared, y equals negative 2x squared. Let's take these, and one at a time, we'll stick them in the graphing calculator and see if we can figure out what this a number is doing to the graph. OK, so we need to go to the y equals area. Make sure your plot is turned off. Get rid of any other equations that you had. Let me start with just that basic one, y equals x squared. There's an actual squared button uh, over here on the left that I can use. Remember, this is the case where a equals 1. It's kind of the most basic case. As far as the window goes, I think if I just use zoom standard, so zoom and 6, that's the one that gives me 10 in every direction. I think that'll work fine. So of course I get a parabola. We saw that earlier when we started this unit. Every quadratic function uh, makes one of these parabolas. Let me go ahead and now add in the second one we had, which was y equals 2x squared. And let's see how the parabola changes uh, when the a changes from a 1 to a 2. I'll hit graph. OK, the red one is the second one. And uh, you know, if I were to ask you how it changed, uh, there's probably a few different ways you could describe it. Uh, one simple way would just be to talk about the width of the parabola. In other words, the fact that the red one seems to be more narrow than the original blue one. It seems like when I changed the a from 1 to 2, the uh, graph got more narrow. Make, it makes me wonder that if I keep making the a bigger, will the graph get even more narrow? Let's, let's change that to, to say, a 9. Now I have 9x squared, and go back to the graph. 
Wow, and sure enough, it got even more narrow. So it appears that when I make that A a bigger number, the parabola gets more narrow. Let's see what happens when I try that third example we had on the paper. So we were going to try 0.5x squared. Now I've made my A a smaller number. It was a 1. Now I'm making it 0.5, which is the same as 1 half. Let's see what happens to the graph. Aha, now the red one is wider than the original parabola. So it seems like if I use a smaller a, then the graph is getting wider. Again, I could kind of test out that theory. What if I used 0 0.1 instead of 0 0.5? what's going to happen now. Okay, really wide now. So it seems like if I use tinier A's, the parabola gets wider. We're definitely figuring some things out. The one last one on the handout was negative 2x squared. What if I make the A negative? What is that going to do to the parabola? The red one will be the new one. Whoa, that was maybe unexpected. So the negative in front of the A seems to have flipped the parabola upside down. I have a downward facing parabola now. In terms of the width, I don't know if you can tell, this is a little bit more narrow than the original one. Uh, that's because of the 2 part of the negative 2. Remember, we already had the case of 2 earlier. In fact, if I add in y equals positive 2x squared, we did that one earlier. That'll come up in black, I believe. You can see the red one is basically just uh, the black one turned upside down. It has the same width as the one with positive 2. It's just flipped upside down because of the negative. Let's go back to the handout and draw some conclusions then. We learned two things here about the role of A. Probably the most important thing is that A controls direction. And what I mean by that is we saw that if you use a positive A, if A is positive, then the parabola is going to open up. The graph opens up. But if you use a negative value of A, the graph opens down. That's definitely one of the things you want to learn about these quadratic functions. A is positive, graph opens up. A is negative, graph opens down. The second thing we learned is that A controls the shape. I'm not talking here about the name of the shape. They're all parabolas. I just mean that sometimes we had a wide one and sometimes we had a narrow one. When we talk about wide and narrow, we're always comparing to this one, that basic shape, the y equals x squared, where a equals 1. And what we saw is that if you increase the a, you tend to go narrow. And if you decrease the a, you tend to go wide. As far as writing that down, we have to be careful, because it's really just the value part of the a that determines the width. Uh, the negative and positive issue, that just has to do with the up and down. So what I have to say is, if the value part of the a is bigger than 1, remember the basic one had an a equals 1, then you're going to have a parabola that's more narrow. right? So like this guy was more narrow because the 2 is bigger than 1. But even this guy was also on the narrow side, not because of the negative, but because the value part of the number was bigger than 1. On the other hand, if the value part of my a is less than 1, then I'm going to have a parabola that's more on the wide side. That was this one here. We did 0 0.5, then we tried 0 0.1. So you have to have like a tiny decimal or fraction a in order to get a wide parabola. So to summarize, you can easily spot the direction and shape of your parabola just by looking at the a. Look at the sine of a to tell you opening up or opening down, and then look at the value part of the a in order to tell you narrow or wide. OK, that's the role of a. Let's go on 
and talk about then the role of the H and the K. I've jotted down the vertex form again. Uh, we've already figured out what A does, so let's just get it out of the way for this little investigation. I can't make it zero. If you make this zero, you'll wipe out the whole uh, thing. You won't even have a quadratic function. So the next best thing would be to make it equal to 1. Multiplying by 1 doesn't do anything, so it's essentially out of my way now. And then I just picked a couple of sets of H and Ks. So we'll do H equals 2, K equals 4, and then H equals negative 3, K equals 0. I'm just going to plug that information in, and then we'll go to the calculator and draw ourselves some parabolas. Let's see, the first one would be X minus 2 squared. It is interesting, there's this built-in minus as part of the vertex form, and then plus 4. The second one, Y equals, let's see, x minus negative 3 is what it would say, but minus negative 3, that's just the same as plus positive 3. That's the simplest way to write it, and I don't even need to put plus 0 at the end. Let's go to the calculator now and see if we can figure out what's going on. Okay, I'll go back to the y equals, I think I will leave the basic parabola sitting there just so we can compare. And in the y2 line, let me go ahead and put that first one we had. Let's see, the a was 1. We had parentheses x minus 2 squared plus 4. Now, I already know, even before I hit graph, I should be seeing a parabola with exactly the same shape as the basic one because I haven't changed the a. The a in both of these equations is 1. Let's hit graph. There's our standard one. Okay, and so the red one is the new one. Uh, it's exactly the same width. I could pick it up and lay it on top of the blue one and it would match. It just appears to have moved somewhere. All the other ones we did, the vertex, that starting point right here, was just at 0, 0 h and k seem to move the vertex somewhere else. Let's see, can we figure out where it went? It looks to me, just from glancing here, 1, 2 over, and then 1, 2, 3, 4 up. It looks to me here like the new vertex is the point 2, comma 4. Well, if you look back at the handout, uh, you can see exactly where that comes from. Those were the values of h and k, 2 and 4. OK, we've got to see if this happens again. Let's go back to y equals, and uh, I'm going to add in now that third one. It was parentheses x plus 3 squared. This is the one where the h was negative 3 and the k was 0. OK, once again, the black parabola here, it has the same exact shape and width as the blue one and the red one. It's just been moved over. Where is the vertex now? 1, 2, negative 3, comma 0. Once again, the h and the k. So h and k are very easy to understand. Let's write down the result now on the handout. Basically what we learned is that the ordered pair h, comma, k is the vertex. When the h was 2 and k was 4, the vertex was 2, comma 4. In the second example, the vertex was negative 3, comma 0. This is why this form is called vertex form, because just looking at it, you can tell the coordinates of the vertex. Again, the vertex is just that point either at the very, very bottom of the parabola, if the graph opens up, or the point at the very, very top of the parabola if the graph opens down. And if you're in vertex form, you can see exactly what it is without really doing any work. We'll practice with vertex form in the next video.